when you get your call, the first thing you need to do is to have a personal encounter with God. Most people who backslide and don't come back to God or don't follow God, never encounter God. When you encounter God, your life changes. Because he sh- you can't meet God and still remain the same. You can meet man and still be the same. You can meet an angel and still be the same. But you can never meet God and be the same. So look at a hardened criminal like Saul. On his way to Damascus, Acts chapter 9, he meets Jesus. That's an encounter with God. Look at everybody who encountered God. Abraham, Moses. But I've seen many who encounter um, angels. Now, if you have not encountered God and you encounter an angel, if you're not careful, you'll be encountering a familiar spirit. So in Exodus chapter 23, God told Moses, I'm not going to go with you. Where you are going, go alone. I'll let my angel, the angel of my presence, Exodus 33, yes. The angel of my presence will go with you. Moses said, no. If you, your presence does not go with me, we are not living here. Because he said, how would they put know the difference between we? That's what Moses said. For the, you see, when a man encounters God, people see the difference between you and everybody. Your ministry is unique. So Moses said, the only way people will know the difference between we, the Jews, and other people, is that we have God, not an angel. As for angel, angels can come to everybody. Okay, let's we go. The Moses said, if you don't personally go with us, don't make us leave this place. Give on 16. Go. How will anyone know that you have you look favorably on me and on your people if you don't go with us? For your presence among us sets your people and the and me apart from all other people on earth. Encounter with God makes you unique. There can't be a fault with you again after you meet God. Cornelius met an angel who said, go and bring Peter. One day, two people were walking. This scripture, this one can be found in the book of Luke. On the road to Amos. Whilst we were walking, Jesus came to them. And whilst we were going, they were discussing Jesus. And Jesus began to expand to them the scripture. When they were about to get to their house, they said, oh, we are going to the house. Jesus said, okay, bye-bye. That is Jesus. He pretends he doesn't want to go follow you. After he has given you scripture. Now, some people get one revelation, two revelations, they are moved. They don't want to encounter God. They've encountered a revelation from a man of God. So they don't want to meet the God of the man. So what happened? They constrained him and said, Listen, you can't walk there alone. It is in the night. There are thieves on the road. You were alone. There will be trouble on the way. We can't allow you to go. And when they persisted, they took him inside. Whilst we were about to eat, Jesus broke the bread and they knew that they had been with Jesus. They had encountered Jesus. They didn't know. If they had not persisted. So let me give an example. Should I go practical? You can be there alone. And all of a sudden, you feel that there's a heat on your hand. There's a heat on your leg. There's a heat. It's an angel that has appeared in the room. It is starting. It's an angel. So, if I get in the church, sometimes when people are getting, I tell them, and they are like, oh, you are just nice to me, right? They we're just talking. You begin to worship God. Before you realize, you are moving to your next level. But most often, we take that, because before God will arrive, most often, you see, God has think it's too big for him to come alone. They will come his messengers. But those messengers cannot be worshipped. They cannot be taken 100%. But after they have done whatever you, they have, have to do with you, if you persist, you will encounter God. And let me tell you, you cannot encounter God in your life. Can be this. It's the